truth is that all of this generational talk makes me cringe. Like, I, I don't see the world that way as split into these generations. The people who are always enforcing that idea are the boomers because they're, they're hung up on this like five year period where they were, they changed everything but actually changed nothing. It's an argument that's happening between writers of op-eds more than it. More than it's based on actual human young people. Yeah. A nation of workers who only have loyalty to themselves. It's like, we, what a pernicious force within our society. But also, that sounds totally reasonable to me. Right. Like, who, who are your loyalties <laughs> supposed to be to? The company that hires you for three months at a time. I guess, like, the, the original me generation was the boomers, so... Oh, they were completely selfless. Yeah, but now this yeah. is clever, because it's the me, me, me generation. We're three times as bad. Oh, how do we motivate these young people with their... <laughs> with their put, smirks and their headbands. Put a ping pong table <laughs> You in need the a ping pong office. table, that's what they like. Here's how you motivate them. They move your company somewhere close to their fun neighborhood. I, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> what do they want? They're looking to be able to bike or walk to work or be in a fun neighborhood. They don't have cars. <laughs> Why can't we take them seriously? Why can't we take them seriously? It's the ukuleles. They should take responsibility for their lives. I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah Hampson. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, the, the whole narrative that they're silly and they won't grow up, it's like, what do you do when you graduate from school, you've got tons of student debt, and you can't find a really good job, but you are young, and your social life is gratifying and fun, and work life is frustrating and bad, and mm -hmm. you're not respected. Yeah, it, you go backpacking for a few months, or you invest your passion and time in your side project, or in your social life. Yeah, or you take a shitty job that pays the bills. Yeah, there's no end of things that you can do that don't seem responsible to a much older person. Yeah. I mean, I guess there is something entitled about wanting a creative, fulfilling job, but it, it seems like a reasonable hope to hold out for if that's been your education. It, entitled is just sort of a sneering, shitty way to describe like, yeah, we sort of promised you that if you got good grades and got into a good university and worked hard in university, that that's the road to being an affluent person with a profession. Mm -hmm. And when that turns out to be completely false, it's disappointing. It is disappointing. <laughs> so I suppose. I think it's okay to be disappointed. Oh, are you, are by you disappointed? That. You entitled little shit. Yeah, and you know you're, what? You're entitled. Where did you get that <laughs> feeling of entitlement? Right, so here's Wente. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't they do both now? <laughs> no, it's Fanon or Potter. <laughs> and, and, and it's not the works of Harry Potter, it's the works of J.K. Rowling. Please, Margaret. That's true. If they devoured the works of Harry Potter, that would be interesting. Yeah, what, what are his works? Magical works. Wooing the millennials. Oh, they need to be wooed. And you know, you know what you woo them with? What? Tube slides. <laughs> <laughs> they do woo them with tube slides. Would that be a deciding factor? Would you decide to stay in a job because they had a slide? If I could walk to it in a fun neighborhood and they had a tube slide, then I think that they've, they've bought some loyalty from mm. me and my entitled ass. <laughs> like, as if the, the presence of the occasional tube slide or ping pong table was something that was demanded as opposed to in lieu of uh, a dentist, right? Or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no dental, but yeah. we do have a ping pong table. Sushi Tuesdays. Sushi Tuesdays, and there's beer in the fridge. Yeah, when you're not wooing them, you should be stalking them. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get the feeling like the, the, the tone of all this is like, it's like young people are some tribe of baboons that the journalists are kind of like sneaking up on like Jane Goodall in the Savannah and, and, and you know, observing from afar. Yeah, that is what it feels like. All those kids playing tennis in the workplace. <laughs> Ironically. Reckless. Yeah, they don't mean it. They don't mean to play tennis. They're just pretending. Okay, so here's the boomerang kid <laughs> stuff. I love the stock photos. <laughs> She's letting him have it, and oh, boy. <gasps> by help. Uh, Boomers taking on added financial burden by help. You are a burden, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's an entitled stance, if I've ever seen one yeah. in my life. And this is really like, in the Boomerang Kid coverage, this is where I think you actually are getting to what it's, what it's really about, which is beyond the, the derisive dismissal of, of this generation is just, oh, damn, this is costing us money. Look at him. He has so little shame about being a boomerang kid that he's actually throwing <laughs> a boomerang. The smug bastard.
Well, roving bands of boomerang kids <laughs> mauling strangers. <laughs> What are the limits when they start actually throwing boomerangs? Yeah. Okay, so when we leave the, the, the globe, because this is just like week after week in the globe, the gl globe just had a, a, a crazy hard on for crapping on young people. And then you turn to the Toronto Star where instead of this kind of lifestyle journalism, it's uh, Neil Sandel, who's a career journalist at CBC, who spent a year actually digging into the numbers. And lo and behold, what did he find? Youth unemployment is at kind of a record high, is about 15%. Mm. But he went further than that, because youth unemployment does not cover things like people who stopped looking for a job and went back to school. If there's somebody with a PhD working at Starbucks, then they're not in that 15%. So instead, he looked at who actually has jobs. And when you actually start to count young people who have jobs, and then you focus on just ones who actually have decent jobs, steady jobs, or staff jobs, or jobs with benefits, or, uh, it, it, it's less than half. It's like 45%, and Ontario is the worst province, actually. Hmm. So this is the first like piece of journalism I read about this topic. When you get away from the trend reporting in the Globe, uh, it paints a very different picture. Yeah, and the trend piece is just sort of kicking someone what, who's who's down. It is. It's like if you ran like a story that was like um, this week in the Globe and Mail, hobos think they're so cool. <laughs> Part eight. Of a 54-part series. Hobos marring the landscape. Syrian war refugees. Why are they so entitled? That's a leap I wouldn't quite make. <laughs> <laughs> but point taken.